I look at my life and I look at a lot of people that I know because I'm very interested in helping uh, children of adversity. And so um, there is still a clear pathway to be able to make it. You know, I grew up in a household that had struggled with addiction and alcoholism. And my, my uh, father worked the graveyard shift. My mom cleaned homes and he was a checker at a grocery store, you know. So uh, um, I didn't know any different. Right, didn't know that there was this. You know, I knew there was a great big world out there, but you know, we grew up struggling. And um, what town was this in? This was in Silver Spring, Maryland. So it was kind of the outskirts of D.C. and and we had bars on the windows and you know brick apartment buildings. And um, it was just a lifestyle that I again, like I said, I didn't know any different. And I I failed fourth grade. Uh, by the time I made it to eighth grade, I had a child. So crazy. Yeah, so that was again a normal for me. And then uh, once I got probably about that age, about 14, 15, I started realizing, you know, there was m more to life. I was in a lot of um, pain, I guess you could call it over. Emotional pain? Yeah. Just having a child, and that was a weird adjustment. And so I was falling in my father's footsteps. I had an intervention in my own high school with my teachers and because my mom. Because you were playing with drugs and alcohol? Drinking or? and crazy, yeah. What age did you start drinking? 14. Whoa. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm just doing what my dad did. I'm doing what my uncle, my aunt, my grandfather, you know, everybody else did, right? Mm. And then um, ended up deciding to go to college. No one in my family had ever gone. And I went, not because I'm this brilliant high achiever, it was because my girlfriend was going, <laughs> you know? And, um, and I found that to be the case a lot of times where, you know, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And so by being uh, in a place that, you know, gave me opportunity, being in college was this wonderful first step of getting out of my neighborhood and out of my old life. Need motivation? Watch a top 10 with Believe Nish. Top 10, I got a top 10. Got my motivation high for my top 10. Gotta learn from the wise women and men. All my life, like nine to the nine. For my top 10, top 10, top 10, nine to the nine. This one's for my top 10. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael and I make these videos because you are probably the most ambitious person in your circle, but you know you're capable of more and you get that push by surrounding yourself with the best. So today let's learn from one of the best, Glenn Stearns and my take on his top 10 rules for success. Enjoy. Rule number two, dream. How'd you get into what you do on the work side? Yeah, well, <clears throat> Like I said, it all started right here, literally. When I drove out with a buddy of mine to California, um, what happened was I found myself sitting on a bench, literally okay. right behind these guys. Right. Okay. And uh, it was the one right up here. And I looked out over here and I was just by myself thinking about life. And I saw these just beautiful people, beautiful homes, beautiful cars and thought, I want this. Right. Like, what does it take to get this, right. right? So I saw a man in that house right there and he was working on his uh, garden. So I walked up to him and I said, what did it take to get this house? Right. And uh, he said, Senor, I'm the gardener. <laughs> he said, <laughs> right. I, uh, I don't know. He probably has a lot of houses. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that's awesome. But he said, I think the man's in real estate. Okay. And I thought, I'm gonna get into real estate. That's right. what I'm gonna do. Real and so I stayed, but it all started here. Sure. And that, that dream right then, got me to say, all right, I'm not going back to Maryland. Right. I'm not going back to my old ways, which were fun. It was the party, right. young college sure. life, but I want to make something of myself. And I became a loan officer, okay. you know, and, and began, you know, kind of in a world that I didn't know anything about, but decided I wanted to um, kind of see what I could do, sure. you know, sure. and off I went. Rule number three, pace yourself. I know a lot of people and they think, I can't even get started mm -hmm. because it's too big of a project. Mm -hmm. How do you get from here 
to there. And I can only tell you it's if you take a look at the overall scope of where you want to go, it's overwhelming and any goals that we have in life. But if you just take little bits at a time and you go for it and slowly building yourself, you can get there. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's been something that I'm really pretty good at, at, at looking at here to there saying, I can get to there. I know I see it, mm -hmm. right? That's the vision. That's what you're right. talking about. We all want to you know, see the vision way out. I'm sitting on a yacht. I've right. got my <laughs> private plane. And, and you go, okay, I can't get there. It's right. too much yeah. in the way. I and, still need to make my mortgage payment, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but if you say, I only need to get to here, which is I want to replace myself. And mm -hmm. that means I need, more, I need more volume. I need more business. I need more whatever it is. Then you've got to start there. How do you get to that? And then the next one is I want to hire a controller, whatever these things right. are, you know, and you keep building by just going to those steps. It, when you look at it that way, it feels, whoa, it's going to take a long time, mm -hmm. right? And then people give up again. And yeah. that's the part about... So many people give up. Right, because yeah. it's too hard or it's too long or it's, you know, too much work. And, and, and But that's the point of any body or any business that's been successful. It, it didn't happen overnight. Rule number four, leave a mark in the world. I mean, happiness to me is not about money, right? It's about the satisfaction that you are doing something larger with your life and feeling very confident in the fact that you are leaving a mark in the world, you know? And we've gone all over the world and I've seen very, very happy people um, and yet they don't have a lot, you know? So I don't think it's defined by, by money. Also, if you want to have more self-confidence and self-belief, the science says it can take up to 254 days of consecutive action for you to build a habit. So I've created a special free program to help you where every day for 254 days, I will send you an email that has a link to an unlisted video that if you watch it, will boost your confidence forward. The link to join for free is in the description below. When I talk to entrepreneurs, you have to make a decision what's important to you. You have to go build self-confidence. The minute you begin to get external in your life, worrying about what other people think about you, right? You've, you've lost all control, you, and, it, and it never fills you up. Rule number five, overcome adversity. I grew up, again, pretty tough. I didn't know it. You know, you don't know when you're growing up how you're, you know, you just know what you know. Right. And uh, again, having some parents that had some struggles, um, you know, my mom would put us in the car and say, let's go, kids, we're going to get lost. Right. And I think it was because there were some issues at home, right? Sure. And um, we would go to get lost and we would drive and drive and she'd say, guess what? You know, we'd say, we're lost, you know, and we'd have to find our way home. And right. so I found that at times when struggle and, and when people that get lost, they get right. nervous and scared. Sure. I found it exciting, wow. you know? And so yeah. it changed my thought process, you know? At Fort, at Fourth grade, I had failed fourth grade because of dyslexia and some other things. In eighth grade, I had a child, right? So my daughter's 41 right now. Wow. So those little things that came along, you know, really, I think they either turn somebody into real dark side sure. or it motivates you to do other things. And in my life, you know, I think it, it made me, um, it was a wonderful gift and a, and a blessing in disguise. You know, wow. that pain yeah. kind of makes you say, I'm gonna freaking do it, man. Right. I'm gonna make something of myself. Right. Rule number six, don't be attached to things. I've never been one that really had um, an attachment to a lot of things. So, you know, I look back on life, you know, some of my best memories are when I slept on the floor for a year when I first got out of college. And, you know, I was a waiter and in the mortgage business, but, uh, you know, it was just fun. I didn't need a lot of things. And so, you know, I haven't been attached to those things. And, and so, you know, I kind of went back at it with, you know, the fact that, you know, life doesn't need to really be something where you're surrounded by these great things. Sure, they're very nice, you know, but I think money really magnifies who you are, right? If, if you're kind of a miserable person, I think you'll be more miserable with money. And if you're a happy person, you know, hopefully you can share the joy with other people and you can even, you know, hopefully even be a little happier maybe. Rule number seven, get great talent. What I found I was pretty good at was really finding good talent. Mm -hmm. You know, it was more about finding 
your weakness and filling those gaps. And so that's what I began doing is just just really searching for great people to mm -hmm. come in and, and join the organization. And, and we just kept growing and growing. Rule number eight, believe. I also believe that old adage, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. You know, and, you know, I think there's been a, a lot of uh, hype or, or there's been kind of this sway in, in our um, culture that leads to people feeling that they are a victim. And I don't really fall for that. Um, yeah, OK, I'm a white male, you know, and so you go, OK, well, you don't have a well, I didn't grow up with a silver spoon, you know, again, I had a, a wooden spoon upside my head maybe, but that's about it. And so I don't think that, um, and, and yes, it is harder for minorities and yes, it is harder for a lot of different groups, but if you decide you wanna make something, I think in this country, there is a pathway to do that. You can look at anybody from Barack Obama, you know, to, our vice president today, right? That if you are a female or if you're an African-American or whatever, that it may be hard. I'm, I'm not putting that out, but there is a path if you really surround yourself with the right people and don't, you know, keep in your head that you're, you can't do it. If you think you can, I believe you can. Rule number nine, never give up. What I found, mm -hmm. I mean, being an entrepreneur, being someone that has gone through a lot of struggles in business is that, you know, those are the times that make you. And, and when you think there is no way out, when you know that, that you have exercised every option you have, that's the time you buck that buckle down and really start, you know, working it, finding, you know, every person you can to help get you involved, get involved and, and you rally your team. It's not the time to give up, you know, and, and, and so I think, as they say, no is, you know, really the, the, the opening of a conversation. It's not the closing of it. And so, you know, I've just learned to just keep beating my head and keep getting the no's until you finally get a yes. And, and um, there was definitely a many, many times where I thought, I am not going to figure my way out of this one. And then I go back to my life and go, you know, I've always said that and somehow I figure it out. And rule number 10, the last one before some very special bonus clips is get a mentor. It was one of those, you know, dreams of, you know, I just, uh, let's go do it. And I didn't even know what it was that we were gonna do, but you know, <laughs> let's become a mortgage broker. And the minute that happened, I thought, well, I wanna be a mortgage banker, you know? And so I thought, all right, how do you do that? So I just kept asking people, you know, I went, and I was asking the wrong people. I would go to the HUD, to the government and say, I wanna be a mortgage banker. Now. Now that I know what I know, they don't know what it means to be a mortgage right. banker. But, <laughs> They're like, okay, good luck with yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> but they were helping me. They were giving yeah. me, you know, you need a credit line. You need this and that. And I would just go to the bank. Hey, I'd like a credit line. <laughs> you want a credit line? You need history, you know, mm -hmm. and things. So it just I began to learn, and, and it took some time. And, and, you know, sooner or later, it just continued to grow. And and um, we started doing really well. And I think there's a lot of people at home and a lot of people that, that – that say, well, I don't know what I'm doing. I didn't know what I was doing either. Right. That's but, okay. But you went out, and what I'm hearing, and what I love that I'm hearing is that you went out and asked questions. Right. And you weren't afraid to ask questions. Right. And to find the people and the help to, to get no, you where you wanted. And I, I think because most people go, I don't know. So then they, they just stay. There's never, and I say this, it's true. There's never a dumb question. And if you're, if you just have the nerve to ask the question, mm -hmm. you know, most people, love to help, right? And you want to feel good that, oh, they've asked me something and they give advice. So finding these people, these mentors, great people that you you aspire to be and just saying, hey, can I take you to lunch or can I just talk to you about how did you do this? Mm -hmm. You'll find the same common thread, I think, of people have integrity, people don't give up, people work harder than most. All these little things that are so simple, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not hard just... You do what you say, you know, don't right. screw people, you right. know, some basic things and then eke it out, eke it out. And you'll look back and you'll keep going, I'm getting somewhere. I'm getting farther along, getting. And then you get to a point where people really start believing in your dream. Yeah. And then they add on and then the momentum can become so 
big and fast. Now I've got a special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the question of the day. I wanna know what was your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week. When you watch a video and just get motivated, you have a 35% chance of actually following through. That's what the sign says. And that is not good enough, Believe Nation. We need to do better when you actually get motivated and then create a specific plan of action for what you're gonna do this week, you have a 91% chance of following through. And when you publicly commit to somebody else, like leaving a comment below in this video, it jumps even higher. So I want that for you. I wanna know your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week so I can celebrate with you. I think what you find a lot of people it's funny because in the mortgage business especially, you see when booming times are, you right. know, because everybody's driving a Bentley. Okay. And then when the life isn't so good, sure. they're all the Bentleys are back in, right? right? And right. so what I found though through, I started my business, I, I started in 89, 88, <coughs> excuse me, in 88 I was here, in 89 I began my own company 10 months later, wow. which was, they say ignorance is bliss, right? Sure. I didn't know what I didn't know. Right. But, um, what happened was I began to grow through the, um, you know, the process of the kind of learning and figuring out what it took to get, you know, my own, um, you know, I was a broker, sure. then I wanted to become a banker, then I wanted to have my own appraisal company and I kept adding on. Right. But all along the way, what I think is the most important part is I kept reinvesting all of my profits back sure. into the company. Wow. And that delayed gratification is real, right? I sure. mean, if you can continue to do that instead of taking it out and buying one of these beautiful homes, right. which I didn't buy in those first 20 years, and I could have, right? right, right. Um, but it was more about realizing the power of reinvesting your money sure. was so important because right, I could then right. get bigger warehouse lines. I could then become a bigger banker and so on and so forth. And right. so that was probably the so key. If you want 10 more amazing rules from Grant Cardone, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. When you make the commitment, specific commitments, write them down. What am I looking for this year? I wanna lose weight. How much weight? This much weight. I wanna make this much money. Great. How much money? I wanna 